The NFL is the most popular sport in America. It's also the most popular entertainment product, period. But by a quirk of US sports, it does not actually sell the most tickets or enjoy the strongest hold over communities. That's college football. But this is a fact that the rest of the world finds strange. Why is a non-professional sports league the best attended in the world? Despite the NFL being the most popular professional league in America, it is not the biggest crowd puller. The NFL is also the premium TV product in the US, dominating any list of most watched programs of any genre in any year. In 2024, it is 100% certain that the 58th Super Bowl on February 11th, staged in Las Vegas, will be the most watched event in America that year, regardless of which two teams are playing. But there's another arm of US sports that sells way more tickets and has entire communities obsessed. The biggest crowd puller in all of American sports and global sport is college football. Or in other words, football teams from US universities playing against each other. In the NFL, the average paying attendance across the league was nearly 70,000 per a game. The next best attended pro league was the Bundesliga, Germany's top soccer division, where the most recently completed season in 2022-2023 had average attendances at almost 43,000 fans per match. The English Premier League averaged 42,100 fans during that same period. College football dwarfs those numbers. No fewer than 19 university teams had bigger average home attendances in the 2023 season than the NFL's 2023 average of 69,478. Seven of those college football teams, from the Michigan Wolverines to teams representing the universities of Penn State, Ohio State, Tennessee, Texas, Louisiana State, and Alabama, had average attendances in 2023 of more than 100,000 fans per a home game. The reigning champion Michigan Wolverines average attendance in 2023 was 109,971, which is actually higher than the official capacity of their stadium. This isn't because tickets are cheap. In 2024, the average ticket price per game will be $82.50, which is about 65 pounds or 75 euros. Some soccer fans will be familiar with Michigan Stadium, nicknamed the Big House. A 2014 summer-friendly match between Manchester United and Real Madrid attracted more than 109,000 fans. Another mind-blowing figure is that between 1975 and the start of the COVID pandemic in 2020, the Michigan Wolverines played 293 consecutive home games in front of paying crowds that never dipped below 100,000. The average attendance across 44 years was 106,918 fans per game. Consider this. Among the 20 most watched TV shows in the history of American television, 19 of them have been Super Bowls. And the 20th was the last episode ever of the war comedy drama MASH in 1983, which drew nearly 106 million viewers. And yet, college football as a centerpiece in US culture is a phenomenon. 16 of the biggest 20 sports stadiums in the US measured by capacity are the homes of college football teams. Pick any state in America and there's a good chance that the college football head coach is the highest paid public employee in that state. At the start of 2024, no fewer than 36 college football head coaches in the US earn basic annual pay of $5 million or more and at least 84 of them were earning more than $1 million per year. For sports fans everywhere else in the world, this will be mind boggling. That college and university sports team coaches earn seven figures basic. Nick Saban at Alabama, most considered one of the greatest college football coaches of all time, was earning $11.4 million a year to coach their football team. Dabo Sweeney at Clemson University in South Carolina earns nearly $11 million a year basic. In 2022, he signed a contract extension to stay in his post to 2031 in a deal worth $115 million total. TV contracts to screen college games are worth billions per year, which underpins the university's ability to spend up to hundreds of millions of dollars per year on their sports teams. 
So college football is amazingly popular in the US, but why? History is important because US collegiate sport has a rich and far reaching past, certainly relative to other major sports. A football game between Princeton and Rutgers University in November 1869 is viewed by many historians as the first collegiate football game, even though it incorporated elements of soccer and rugby. The first Super Bowl didn't happen until 1967. Many major college football rivalries of today date back to the 1880s. Michigan first played Notre Dame in 1887. Other college football rivalries that date back to that time include the Battle of the Brothers, clean old-fashioned hate and battle for Highway 92. College football is embedded even in the military academies. The Army vs. Navy game dates back to 1890. That fixture is one of the most enduring rivalries in college football. The Army Navy game has often been attended by the U.S. President and has been televised nationally since 1945. The U.S. Army, Navy, and Air Force all play games in college football leagues. Their respective coaches at the end of 2023 were Jeff Munkin from Army, Brian Newberry from Navy, and Troy Calhoun of Air Force. They respectively earn $2 million, $1.6 million, and $1.7 million a year. They are the three highest paid people in the entire U.S. military. For context, a four-star general, the highest ranked soldier in America, earns $212,000 a year. Layered onto the importance of history in college football is the collegiate affiliation of students who have passed through universities where football has been such an integral part of their college life. These alumni run into many millions at the biggest universities in America. College football is massive, especially in parts of America where there have been few to no professional teams, including in the Midwest and South, and the game day experience is also fundamental including the tailgating tradition of cooking food and drinking out of the back of your car. Throw academic and city rivalry into the pot, and college football's popularity has another source, alongside broader issues such as community, local identity, and in many cases, tradition that professional sports can't match. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. The Athletic is home to the best team of sports writers, reporters, and analysts in the world, offering exclusive stories and unrivaled insight. You can try The Athletic for free for 30 days by clicking the link in the description.